Today, we're building more units. And by units, I mean, we're gonna build a sofa just here, which is gonna double up as my son's bed. Now this bench that's gonna be here has to do a multitude of things. It has to hold a fridge, which is gonna be an electric cool box, which is gonna slide out. So imagine that this box here is the fridge. It's gonna sit underneath and it will literally just be pulled out just like that from underneath the bed out into the main part of the van here. It has to be big enough to accommodate the cooler, but also I wanna make a pull out part of the bed that pulls out from here and connects to the toilet side so that if I have a guest staying over in the van or anything, or somebody doesn't want to sleep with me up there, probably be if I'm with my wife and I've annoyed her, I'll be sleeping down here or in the doghouse. It just means that there'll be a full sort of almost about what, five foot nine bed across there if I ever need it. And to accomplish the pull out bed, I'm pretty much going to copy the design that I did in the last van and just do the every other slat design, which just pulls out. I mean, you can't do it now because the van's full of rubbish, but. You get the idea. Now the easiest way to do this would be to have an electric cool box ready to go that I can literally put in there and then build the unit around. And because I haven't decided which cool box I'm gonna go for yet, a lot of them are pretty much all the same size. As long as I build it to the spec of the largest cool box that I might possibly have, then any one that I decide I'm gonna get, it will fit. So this is the maximum width of the fridge, whichever one I choose. And then as long as that's got enough space in there to be able to be pulled out. But the thing that we need to work out as well is we've got the thickness of the battens for the sofa bed as well. We still have to make sure that we're taking into account the thickness of the wood that's gonna go there without jeopardizing the width. I don't really wanna lose a load of space in the walkway here. <laughs> When you build anything like this, it is pretty much just like putting together a jigsaw. You just gotta measure, measure again, cut, and then start assembling it. I'm literally working from the base. I'll make the base, and then I'll build the uprights, and then I'll build the front. It's pretty simple, really, but you get the idea. But all vans are different, and all the sort of spaces that you're gonna put it in are different as well. So that's why you just have to kind of look at the area where you're looking to build it, and then just go from there. So in order for this to work, is what I want to do, when this part of the bed pulls out from here, it needs to line up exactly with the same height as what the toilet lid is, okay? So that means that the upright needs to take into account the thickness of the slats, which is 18 mil. So it's all very well being like, well, you just make it the same as the other one, you don't. So we need to go up, and then that needs to be 18 mil on the top, lovely. By no means am I ever making educational videos on this. I am just pretty much making it up as I go along. But if you do decide to follow any of these steps and you find that when you're building furniture it's all a bit wobbly, it's not until it's actually properly squared up that you can get rid of the wobbles. But I mean, there are other ways of taking out any sort of wobbly bits, like using the pocket drill, which I used when I built the other cabinet. And you can actually put two screws in and that does take a lot of the wobble out. But for the sake of this, I wanted bigger screws 
because it's going to obviously take a full weight of someone laying down on it. What I'm saying is the wobbliness will go once it's all built. <laughs> So here is my master plan, okay? So there'll be a piece of this along here, okay? Which will pull out. And I was hoping it would go all the way to this side and join, but obviously you know, I didn't measure anything, did I? So unfortunately, if that happens, we've got all of this going on. So I'd like to go back to the drawing board. And what I'm thinking of doing is having, still having this pull out, which will come out to about here. Well, actually, it'll come out to there, right? So that'll come out to there. And then I'm going to have another piece on here that'll fold down and go onto that to join those two together. I mean, it's not ideal, and I probably will never use this as a bed, but I need to get it to work. It's just whether having another hinge on here, like this, is going to be really annoying for the toilet. I mean, probably not, I mean, but I'm going to cut a little gap in here anyway to open it but once that's like that I mean it won't make any difference so I think that's what I'm gonna do to there, fold that out, ta-da, that works. But the question is, is it still comfortable sitting here with a slight lip? Feels fine. Perfect for my legs. Hang on. Can 
nicely stretch out along here. Ugh. Ugh, kind of, not really. Probably feet would have to go the other side. I reckon feet this side because then you can kind of sleep a little bit diagonally. Ugh, Jesus. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, it kind of works. <laughs> and then, as quick as you like. single. Now I would say that was a pretty productive afternoon. I say afternoon, it's taken me all day, but I really like how it's come out. I'm still not 100% sure about this, about whether I, there might be a better way of doing it like that. I just, I just don't like the way that it looks, but if I can think of anything better, then I'll do it. Um, I haven't put a front on it either because I will be putting a door on. I've just not decided what yet, um, but that will be the way that the fridge gets slid out. But thank you for watching. If you are enjoying these videos, you can check out the full playlist right there where you can follow the build from start to finish. And I'll, I'll see you next week. Cheers.